So a little bit about me, my name is Scott Moss. This is um, my third course here with Mark and Frontend Masters. Very excited to be back, especially with Lucas, because he's the homie. Um, <laughs> we always just build stuff together. We've been working together for, and it's been over a year now. Yeah. Time flies. We're still friends. And we're still friends. Uh, uh, so I'm glad to be here. I'm really passionate about this technology. I love just everything JavaScript, really. So Angular 2 is just awesome. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you guys about the hard part. Yeah, yeah. The part that nobody wants to do, the part that's probably going to give the most errors. But I promise you, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's, not, it's all bad. It's not that bad. All right. So we're going to talk about the tooling. Because with Angular 2, although you don't need any tooling, you can just write it in pure JavaScript. But that's not fun. Nobody wants to do that. So we got, But it comes at the cost. We have to learn all this other stuff before we can get there. So some of the stuff that kind of goes into building a modern application, not even with just Angular 2, but just like a modern application, even if you're using something like React or something, you're going to need something like module loading, obviously, because the browser doesn't support modules of any kind. Um, and if you don't know why you need modules, let me know, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Jeez, Scott, <laughs> why do you need modules? Why do we need modules? Well, for encapsulation, just like our components encapsulate logic that can be reused and shared, our application, uh, we, can, we can organize our application that way too. So nothing is exposed globally, uh, and we can share things and swap things around. And we get cool things like asynchronously loading parts of our application, depending on routing. We get to share modules across different applications. It's pretty awesome. So modules is great, are great. Uh, so definitely, you should be using some type of module system. Uh, and there's tons of them out there. Uh, Webpack. So Webpack is a bundler that creates the modules for us to use in the browser. There's many other ones. Like, for instance, Angular. Actually, the Angular team recommends using JSPM, which I believe actually is a better way than Webpack, but at the current time, Webpack just has better stuff, better plugins, better support. Um, the Webpack 2 is on the horizon. It's really awesome. So although I think JSPM is, is better, and eventually I think it will just be like the go-to, as of right now, I think Webpack is just a better choice to go with. So that's what I'm sticking with for now. But JSPM is awesome, too. Highly recommend checking it out. Whereas JSPM is, is also a um, package manager and a bundler, whereas Webpack is just a bundler. So it's like two different things. JSPM will like replace NPM for you and everything. It'll do all that stuff. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but that's what the Angular team recommends. So it's worth a look. Um, ES6, ES5, um, and then with Angular 2, we got TypeScript and then typings. So we'll get into uh, we'll get into that stuff. Any questions so far? Oh, okay. Here's a here's a here's a uh, a quiz. What's different about this logo than the Angular 1 logo? Who knows? There's only two things that's different. Material design, duh. <laughs> There's no JS. <laughs> no, the, the original one didn't have JS on it. Oh, I thought it did. Anybody know? There was a white border around the front. There was a white border, and then what's the other one? Shadow. Shadow, yeah. Yep, there's a shadow. There's a line in the middle of the angle. Or yep, exactly. The there's a shadow on the A and a white border. Sorry. This is like the third or fourth different version. I just noticed it like five minutes ago, so I figured I'd ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's, like I said, there's all this stuff you got to, you know, jog through or, or crawl through um, to get to Angular 2. Um, most of the stuff is optional, like TypeScript. You know, you don't have to use it. ES6, optional, Babel. All that stuff is optional. And then if you take away all that stuff, then really all you have is RxJS and Angular. And then even you can kind of get away using Angular 2 without even using RxJS. Not recommend it. But you can get away without using some of the stuff built into it. Again, not recommended. At that point, you might as well just use like Angular 1. You might as well. There's no point. All right, we want to grow. We, we want to learn hard stuff. <coughs> module loading. So module code is not you know, required with Angular. Like I said, you can use ES5, and you can use your own iffy system, or whatever you want to do. Uh, you don't need modules, but it is totally recommended because that's just how the architecture is built. Everything's component-based, so it makes sense to have your application module-based, too. It just fits like a glove. Totally do it. 
Uh, you can easily interact. Uh, it allows us to use specific parts of the library. Um, so, you know, we don't have to load up all these script tags everywhere and different paths, this different place. No, we can just use the different modules. Hopefully the developer who made the module made it in such a way that you can pick the parts that you want, like the new version of Lodash. You can load different files without loading the entire library. It's pretty awesome. Um, obviously collisions with name spaces and stuff. Uh, we don't need script tags. And because modules are not supported, again, we need some type of module loader to load it. Webpack. It's definitely the, one of the most popular ones. It's definitely my favorite one. The thing about Webpack that I like is it turns everything into a module. So not just JavaScript files or TypeScript files. Everything is a module. Images, CSS files, JSON files, HTML files. Whatever file you want to throw at it, it'll turn into a module. And you can load it in any other module. Pretty awesome, right? I think it's dope. Um, so this is why we're going to use it, because it's very, very useful. Um, but again, there are other ones out there, notably JSPM. Uh, there is also Browserify. Um, and, and I mean, you could probably just build your own with Gulp if you wanted to. Maybe mock out your own CommonJS using some type of UMD stuff. 